I'm John Veltheim. I'm the founder of the Body Talk system. This course is a very comprehensive course because I'm taking, I've taken on a, a very big subject and I think it's the biggest course I've ever put together because I'm trying to paint a big picture. We use the term Eastern medicine, but we're really looking at energy medicine in all the different forms, the understanding of the energies of the body. I like to call it, my other alternative name for it would be the anatomy and physiology of the energy systems. Because you see, we can learn anatomy and physiology normally, and we learn about biochemistry and physiology, and we learn the actual structures and all that, but it's very much of the physical world. Yet we know from science that none of that works without the underlying energy, because it's energy comes first and matter follows. So it makes sense that we really need to know the energy systems. But of course, we have to remember that the energy systems, they have been studied in a similar way to, in fact, the, the Western medicine model of Cartesian medicine, where, you know, you get the people who are experts in endocrinology and neurology and so on, and you say, okay, they're Cartesian. They're just looking at one aspect of the body. And we know in dynamic systems theory and quantum theory, everything's connected and everything should integrate. So we're critical of them for not following the scientific premise that is necessary for holistic or integrative healthcare. And you see, the same thing happens because if you're an acupuncturist like I am, you means you're an expert in meridians, but that's Cartesian. You're not an expert in the whole system and you're not tying it together and you could be a chakra th therapist and you're an expert in chakras and you can uh, do the gunas and all the different things in Indian medicine and expert in that. But the point is, these are all Cartesian and it's a case of, well, if they're doing this and they're using chakras and these are using meridians and other people are using the kundalini energies and others use the prana, how do they all tie in? Surely they've got to all be tied in. They're all different systems. And um, it really is important to know this. And it's very important to know and understand all those different systems and how they tie in and what, how the body utilizes them in different situations. Because it's only then that you're really going to know what to do that's best for a person. You're not just going to use the only tool you've got. Um, because there are times when working on meridians of acupuncture is not the quickest and best way of getting a result. And um, the fact is, even in different cultures and different backgrounds, some people operate more through the chakra system than the meridians or the kundalini, and others operate more through the kundalini than the chakras and, and so on. And um, you'll find that according to what's going on in your life, different systems will be taking preference. And you'll, you need to understand how that works. You need to know the questions you can ask to find out what is actually going on with the person. So what I've done is I've done a synopsis of the key factors. In other words, I've done a synopsis of Chinese medicine and I've uh, looked at the meridians and I've given what we call the meridian pictures, and that is the common symptoms of them and their common functions, etc. I've streamlined it a bit because, you know what, there is so much rubbish out there. So many people have written textbooks that they've just added stuff and added stuff and added stuff. And some of the old traditional stuff in Chinese medicine, when, when they talk about stuck blood and stuck qi and all these types of things, aren't pertinent today. You know, they're relating to diseases that don't even exist anymore most of the time and conditions that just aren't part of the Western world, as it were. So what I've done is eliminated a lot of that and I've just come up with the, the key ingredients that are still dynamic and will enable us to have an understanding of the meridians and how they function, for example, without having to become a doctor of Chinese medicine or something like that. And I've also gone into the extra meridians, which aren't very well discussed or very well understood and even many colleges don't teach them because there's a lack of understanding. But fortunately, for, I studied them for many years, and I have an in-depth understanding of them, and they're very important for, for practitioners to know about. Any person working in energy medicine, and obviously I do the chakras, I also do um, them in a, in a simpler way, and look at the different aspects of them and the different ways they can be utilized. And then I do the Kundalini energy, which is the most important and most found foundation energy. I spend a lot of time on that because it's really the Kundalini that gives rise to all the other energy systems. And um, then I look at some of the other systems like the uh, 
what we call the connectome of the brain that is the energy set up, set up that actually controls the way the brain functions. And, uh, you know, this is state of the art neuroscience, but it's still looking at the energy systems, but in a different way. So by tying all the different things together and explaining how they interrelate, how they connect with one another and what they do. And then I go back further to source because I start looking at, you know, what's the, what's the most fundamental things that these energy systems rely on to function? And they come down to some very straightforward things like the water molecules in our body. And we've got to remember that as far as actual molecules go, the body is 98.7% water molecules. It's, it's 60 or 70% by weight, but by molecules. So water molecules are the actual crystalline structures that conduct the energy. And we need to understand how they do that and what can go wrong and what we can do about that and correcting that. And then I go even further because we will learn in this course, and you've probably heard, you would know already, is that they've shown that the energy that we use in a day-to-day -day basis we think we get it from our food, but in fact, our food and the, and the liquid that we take in only accounts for about 25 to 30 percent of our energy. So, the, you know, here's the question. Where does the energy come from? If it isn't from our food, that keeps us going. And how does it get there and how does it circulate? And so that's where, to tie it all in, I start with the original sources and I'll talk about how it all occurs from a quantum physics point of view. And I'll do the science of how the energy comes through the black holes, how it splits into various forms of matter and dark matter, the way that um, you have aspects of the world that go faster than the speed of light and less fast than the speed of light, and the way we have a big torus pump in our spine that is pounding away and actually generating energy and sucking energy from the zero point field or universal consciousness and bringing in not only energy, but also knowledge. And uh, I'll talk about how that is transmitted, how that's brought in, and how that then feeds the system. So that when you finally understand all that, you're going to have a comprehensive understanding of the basic factors that make the body run. Because the outer anatomy and physiology is just a manifestation of that energy. And it's just the final product. That's not where it all happens. It happens at the energy level. And so if you're in energy medicine, you know, this course is not just for body talkers. This course is for anyone who wants to know more about life. But professionally, if you're doing anything with bioenergetic therapy, acupuncture and Chinese medicine, any of the Indian medicines, if you're doing um, kinesiology, anything to do with working with the body's energies, you really do need this overall picture. And what I've done is just use my broad academic background to refine it down to the essence of each of those factors and then tie them together in a big picture. And there'll be a protocol chart that you can follow and that you can see how to tie everything in. And to me, this is going to be one of the most important courses I've, I've taught in my lifetime. And it's, of course, I'm able to teach it because it's sort of the end, an end product of a lifetime of study in this field. And uh, I'm really excited about the course. I think the, the new stuff I'm teaching in it is my favorite parts, the physics and things like that. And just the tying it, the, you know, the tying it all together. And I think of, of all the things I had studied, the one I hadn't studied as much was the Kundalini energy. It became something of very strong interest to me in the last 20 years. So now I, I'm when it comes to the Kundalini energy, I think it's the most important of all the energy circuits. It's the master's circuit. And this is, in fact, the first course I'm teaching uh, Kundalini energy in. And so that's new and exciting to me. You're going to enjoy it as much as I enjoy teaching it.